Today, I wanna to show you one of the most powerful ways that you can organize your Notion workspace if you are in a company workspace with teams and departments. A lot of times, Notion just feels like it's going to be amazing for a lot of people, and it can be, and yet, when you go from a small team into an actual company of hundreds of people, uh, a lot can get really disconnected and it can be hard to actually figure out how to set this up in a way where you're not just either overwhelmed with everything or can't find what you're looking for. So I'm going to show you what we call our op model database, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is how we actually centralize all of our information and everything important in the workspace connects to this one database. And I actually took this from a Notion demo by one of the members of the Notion team uh, because I just thought it was such a good way of organizing for specifically companies at scale. So let me show you what that looks like in Notion and I trust that you'll be able to uh, see how it can help you organize your workspace. So let's talk about the, the key part of what makes this actually uh, so useful. So when I come over to this Lunar Ops database, this is modeled after the company's operating model. So we call it Lunar Ops, but essentially what we're doing is we're recreating the operating structure, the hierarchical structure of the company, breaking down the company into its departments and those departments into its teams, and then if applicable, those teams into their sub teams and so on. And by doing this, this is actually a very intuitive and very structured approach to organizing your information because that's exactly how you've already organized your company. So what we're doing is we're just giving it the digital equivalent or the digital representation in Notion using a database, using sub items. So we've got Lunarco, which is the name of this, this company, and it breaks down using sub items into the departments that belong to this company. So we've got engineering and research, mission planning, astronaut training, and so on. These are the departments of this company. And you're going to see in, in just a few minutes how this actually helps us organize a workspace, helps you get the information you're looking for without getting uh, overwhelmed with everything else. These actually break down even further. So if we look at something like research, for example, this breaks down into even further teams, which we've uh, established a propulsion team, a materials team, and a life support team. So uh, Elon Musk, if you wanna talk to me about you know helping you out, send me a DM. We can also see that these uh, items in this ops database have relations. And so right here, we've got the, the items and then we've got these uh, relation columns to files, to people, to projects, but this can be really connected to anything in your, your workspace that needs to be organized at least on the operating uh, hierarchy. It's basically like global tags. If you're familiar with the way some people will set up a database for tags, so instead of tagging an item using the multi-select option as a property in a database, what they'll do is they'll create a database called global tags and anything can be related to that global tags database and it's essentially acting like this centralized tagging structure for your workspace and that's that's great for a lot of different use cases. For a company, that's kind of what we're doing, but what's better about this is that it's not up to just whatever you think the thing should be tagged with. We, we already have an established structure and that's the department and the teams and so on. It's an already existing structure in the company and it's not subject to change unless something really big is actually happening in the company. If you add another department or another team, that's actually a big deal and it, it warrants, it merits doing a little bit of extra work to set up the workspace for that team or, or whatever you're adding. And so let me show you how this actually comes into play. So this is that Lunar Ops database. And when we back out, what I have are hubs for each of those different departments. And so what we've decided to do, and this is actually how we implement Notion for our clients, is we have hubs for each of the largest scale, largest encompassing breakdown of the company, and that usually means departments. So what is that one step below the entire company? And so we've got these hubs for each of those, and these are the exact same uh, names as you saw in the ops database. That's because we're, we're doing, we're modeling this after the company, just like we did with the database. So when we jump into the research hub, this is the hub for this, you know, fake research team. And in this hub, we're going to show, uh, some important stuff for that team. And you can kind of make this however you, you need it. You can bring in links to databases if you want, or you can just, you know, put announcements or fun pictures here up to you. But what we have 
is the ability to now contextualize information for not only this department, but we can dive into the teams themselves, you know, over here in propulsion. Let me jump into this application I've made just for the research team. So as context, we do have a project manager for the entire company. It's down here, and this is kind of that large scale overview. I've, I've made this, or at least I, I covered this in a different video uh, on project templates, but this is kind of that 30,000 foot view. This lets you see the entire company's projects that are going on and manage them and even see some of the tasks. So the context or the audience for this particular case is the entire company. This is, you wanna see it all, you wanna see the, the grand picture. And that's what a lot of people want when they come to Notion. They want the ability to do specific work, but then aggregate that data at some larger level. That's that's where these features and views of Notion really uh, come in handy when you use them well enough. So that's the project manager here. What I'm looking at is I've already jumped into research and I'm looking at the research projects kind of manager or, or whatever you want to call it. Now, obviously this isn't as robust of a system, but I want to show you uh, how this works. I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about Notion and have some background in, in what this is. And it may be helpful to watch some of my previous videos on how I build using what I call perspectives. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to go into super detail on how to build this. Hopefully you don't expect that everything on here is going to be super robust, but I want to show you the concept and trust that you'll be able to take that and learn something from that. But if you do have any questions, for sure, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. Or let me know if something specifically needs a little bit more detail and I would love to get some feedback so that I can give you what's useful and not overwhelm you with a bunch of stuff that is way too nerdy. So we are in the research hub, we've already established that, and we've gone into this research projects view. And so it's pretty intuitive that what I wanna see here is only projects that are relevant to the research team. So I've got this filter set up to where I'm seeing only projects related to research. And you can also see that I've got projects that are related to any of its sub teams. So not to confuse you too much all at once, uh, just confuse you a little bit all at once. This is uh, what it looks like when I filter for the team research. And this is great, especially if you just have like one level of breakdown of your company, which I would recommend keeping it simpler uh, rather than uh, making it more complex than it needs to be, but make it whatever is useful. So in this case, um, I only wanna see those research projects. And by doing it this way, by centralizing everything that's important or global in the workspace around this one tagging structure, which is about the, the operating model rather than anything else, this has been the most intuitive way to not only filter information, but build a system that scales and works and is useful for a company because most companies divide up their work by some sort of working group and that usually means teams. And so in this case, we're looking at only projects that are related to the research team. And if you're familiar with related databases, this is really it. This, this should get the point home that we're using this filtering structure to only show you things that are related to this one. Now, if you're savvy with Notion, you might be wondering, well, why would you do it this way rather than doing it uh, in the way where you use self-referencing filters in the research team page? Okay, if, if I just lost you, hang in there. So when we go back to that Lunar Ops in, the, uh, in this database, let's say I've got this research team right here. Why not just make it to where when you open up this research page, I make it where the template for these pages, you know, it, it all includes it to where once I open up research this page, I'm seeing the tasks and the projects related to research. That's where a lot of people build Notion it's a great way to build uh, scalable operations in Notion because you're able to create those linked views without having to manually filter them. In the approach I'm showing you, you do have to manually filter them. And I think that the self-referencing approach is amazing for items that you are creating in Notion on a frequent basis, especially temporary ones. The best example that I always use is projects because you create a project, you do it frequently, and you finish those projects. And that makes making a new project super easy and scalable. You don't have to set up a bunch of filters every time. So when I open up the projects database, 
when I open up one of these, I already have this, you know, linked view of tasks that are related. You know, all I had to do is press this new button because I have a template set up. Now, what I'm suggesting is actually more useful for a company context when we jump into research and the research projects. This is going to, going to apply for more things beyond projects. It would be files and anything else that I'm relating to that the ops database. What I'm suggesting is that you actually take the time to build it manually ahead of time because all you have to do is build it once and it's done. And by doing it this way, by building it with perspectives, it's my belief, and we've seen it through many experiences, that it actually allows you to create a much more intuitive and focusable workspace. So I don't have to open up the research page and just see a stack of databases and try to load them up if they load in time and then try to find where I'm looking for. Th those are common dashboards that you see in Notion builds. And it's great for usually a single person or a very small team. But when we when we talk about using lots of data and wanting to create an environment that's actually user friendly and doesn't overwhelm you, we think that perspectives actually creates this ability to know where you're at. So I know I'm in research. I'm not going to see anything from any other department except for anything that's related to research. And now I've drilled down even more into the object type research projects. So I, with two clicks or maybe three, have already narrowed down to specific things that I'm looking for, which is a project that is involved in the research team. This is something that we're passionate about. This is a, a building philosophy that we take at Notion State, and we've actually found that this is way more helpful for companies at scale. We, we put in the extra time to build the right structure. And so what we have is a one-to-one -one kind of matching between starting off with, especially the, the way the company is built, the way it's, uh, it, its op model is. And what we do is we recreate a structure, uh, a digital representation of that with this Lunar Ops database and we break it down. And then we also build separately, we have actual hubs for each of those departments and hubs even for teams. So this is the research hub. Another word for that would be a dashboard. What we're doing is we're actually separating data from dashboards. With this dashboard, I could actually, you know, delete this research projects page and none of the data is gone because the, the database actually lives elsewhere. But what, what is more important is that this gives you the ability to focus and drill down and navigate throughout your workspace without getting overwhelmed or lost. You know where you're at, you know what you're looking for. In a few clicks, we are taking the majority of the uh, data set that we're trying to filter in on and we're getting rid of like 80% of it with each click. When I jumped into the research hub, I am only jumping into see things that are related to this one team. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've effectively narrowed down anything that I'm going to see, you know, by, by six sevenths. And that's already effective enough, but I'm also doing it in a very just natural way of going into one department. And so this is actually provides a place for an entire department to converge and only see the things that really is more relevant to them and that they're working on. And then we can, with another click, you know, if we're looking for projects, we can jump to this research projects kind of application, or I can create a system where I jump into a team of that, that department and uh, get even more granular before looking for the data that I'm looking for. So in this page, I could also do another app just for propulsion and call it like propulsion project manager or something like that. I have the freedom to be able to customize according to each team without confusing everyone else in the department. Why are there all these different links and applications? I'm a little, you know, if you, if you put them all together, that's a little confusing, but now that we're kind of going level by level, it makes a lot of sense. You don't have to ask any questions. If you're curious how we build this, we've got the navigation, uh, laterally across the different teams, but then also to the department. But then we also have the button to go back to the entire HQ. And this is in a synced block. So each of these pages would contain the synced block of navigation. And then below the navigation, we have a more dedicated to this specific page, a place where we can build these custom apps 
for the whatever level we're at. So I can do this on the, the HQ level, I can do it on the department level, or I can go down into propulsion and I can make an application just for propulsion. What I mean by application is just another level of, you know, doing some work. And so in this case, this is research projects. And this is where I might even use the perspectives method and build kind of a pack uh, for project management, maybe for research. So. You know, I, all I have is this navigation. This is just one page. This is totally fine. This is a good approach if all you care about is looking at research projects. We've built applications that were more step-by-step -step for going through different steps of product uh, management, and that works too. And then, you know, if we wanted to go more robust, we could build this same project manager here, you know, where we've got task pool, calendar flag, tags, etc. We could do the same thing. We could recreate this project manager, but then all we have to do is go and adjust all the filters to where we're only showing projects that are related to the team whose hub we're on. So there's a lot of flexibility here and really all it requires is just going in and making sure you change the filters. But when everything is only uh, at least relating to that op database, and that's the one centralized organizing structure that you have for a workspace. You can have others, but when that's the one centralizing and required one, if you watch my other video previously, it's MISI. It's mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. It covers all the options and none are left out and none are overlapping. It could overlap, actually. You could have a project that relates to multiple teams, but again, that's still really intuitive. If different teams own that project, it it's not confusing what that means. You just relate, you relate it to both teams and it's going to show up in both teams hubs. Again, I, I would trust that you uh, are at least familiar with Notion a little bit to get to this point. And if you're still watching and you have some questions on, on what I'm doing and how I'm building in this way, I would recommend going to some of my previous videos on the perspectives method and you can see different ways that uh, I approach building a notion. It's a little different, but I think it's actually really effective and it's really intuitive. It is the most in line with the notion philosophy of allowing us to build our own tools. I, I think we're, we're able to build our own applications within notion. And that's exactly what we did here. If you have any more questions or you want some more information or want me to dive deeper on any particular thing, please do let me know. I'm trying to find that balance between what is helpful, especially with this concept that is really mostly pertaining to companies. And there's not a lot out there that is pertaining to companies and how to build for people at scale. And we have some experience in that. And so I want to be able to share that in a way that's helpful, but not just totally uh, overwhelming. So we'd love to even just know who you are. I mean, at this point, we just crossed 1500 subscribers, which in the grand scheme of things, maybe isn't a big audience, but it's it means a lot to me. It means a lot that you come and watch my videos. And so I would love it if you just dropped your little hello in the comments, just let me know who's actually watching. And I would love to say hi back and, uh, and interact with you. And if you wanna interact even more, the best place to find me and talk to me is over on Twitter at the Josh Red. I'm always available there and love to chat about Notion and out. So please do feel free to uh, get a hold of me. And that's going to do it for this video. I need a cool way to like sign off, you know, like stay productive or notion flow with the notion, notion state, state of the notion. This is my, this has been your state of the notion address. Keep on going. Be motivated. Let me know in the comments how I should sign off because I need some help. All right. We'll see you in the next video.